Hi SQL people, welcome to another free tutorial from SQL Maestros. See most of the tutorials and most of these demos that I do on our channel here, the learnings that you get from these demos and these free tutorials, most of them you could apply to your production right away. I mean you learn a trick, a technique, a tip that you get, you can go and check on your production servers and you, you can probably implement that immediately or maybe after a few trial and errors. So I thought let's do something different today. The tutorial today and whatever I'm trying to show you today is something about the internals of SQL Server, something about the SQL Server optimizer. And it's good to know we as SQL Server nerds always try to find, uh, you know, beneath the surface what's going on. So the learnings that you're going to get today, uh, you won't be able to really apply it into production right away, but you will be delighted and enlightened to see, okay, you know something internals and you know where all these numbers are coming from. So today's tutorial is about the estimated IO cost, the estimated IO cost that you see uh, in the execution plan when you take the uh, cursor over all those iterators and the tooltip that pops up, you will see estimated IO cost, estimated CPU cost. So you'll see a lot of those flying numbers with decimal places, etc. Where are those numbers coming from? What's the mathematics behind that? And to iterate again, you will feel good to know that, okay, now you know the mathematics behind these numbers, but yeah, practically uh, you really will not be able to apply it directly when you're doing query tuning and performance optimization. Okay, and I'll give you the background of that also. Okay, so let's get started. We are looking at estimated IO cost. So for the purpose of demo, we are using AdventureWorks 2016. Let's turn on actual execution plan. So we have this table person dot person. Let's do a simple select from this table. Now person dot person will have, if you look at the status bar, 19,972 records. Let's just do a quick zoom in. And there you can see total number of records. Keep this number in mind, 19,972. Now let's jump over to the execution plan and take the cursor over clustered index scan. What are we trying to decipher today is the estimated IO cost. So you see a number here, 2.84757, 84757, that's the number, okay, 2.84757. So the question is, where is this number coming from? You will see a lot of magical numbers out there like CPU cost, IO cost, we will not talk about all of them today, but today we will only focus on this IO cost 2.84757. So let's move forward. I am going to record this uh, number here. Let's just put it down. Uh, 2.84757. That's the number. Now, let me tell you where is this number coming from. Uh, before I go into the further scripts, I'll tell you where is this number coming from. There is a cost to access the data that's lying on the disk. Now, what do we mean by, you know, data that is lying on the disk? So, you know that SQL Server table, tabular, table data is stored in something what we call as data pages. Each data page is 8 kilobytes. Now, that data page might reside on the disk or it might be in memory. So, when SQL Server has to access those data pages, there is a cost associated with it. Now back in the days, all these costs that you are saying like IO cost and CPU cost used to be the number of seconds, like the estimated number of seconds to access the data. But uh, now in, in many recent versions of SQL Server, I mean from the last many years, uh, this unit of measurement in terms of time is gone. It is just a number. There is no unit of measurement. So all this number that you're seeing, 2.84757, etc., there is no unit of uh, measurement. It's just an arbitrary number. And that's why it's practically irrelevant at this moment. Okay, so this cost to access the data page is as follows. To access the first data page, the cost is this. This is the magical number and this is hard coded. 0 0.003125. And to access the additional subsequent pages after the first data page, this is the cost. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this again. You are accessing 
x number of pages how many pages do we have we'll talk about that so to access the first data page this is the cost and all other data pages after the first page this is the cost so if you add all this up you will get this magical number 2.84757 but now you need to find out how many data pages are there we know how many rows are there but we don't know how many data pages are there so all this information is stored in this DMV, DMDB partition stats. So all that we can do is pull out these two attributes, the row data page count and the row count from this DMV. We can supply the table, which is person dot person and filter on index ID one. Okay, let's go and do this and we are going to look at leaf level. So let's go and execute this clustered index there. So we have number of rows is this matching yes 19972 and the number of pages we have is 3841 so in order for sql server the optimizer to access 3841 pages this is the cost first page cost is this which is the first page and the remaining 3840 this is the cost per page so the mathematics goes as simple as this first page and then you multiply this with the remaining pages, which is 3841 minus one. So let's go and see if we get the same number. Let's go and execute this. We are getting 2.8475660 rounded up to 2.84757. Yes, this is a match. You are a SQL Server DBA, developer, SQL Server practitioner, or someone who is just learning SQL Server, you'll feel very happy now that, oh, you know where is this number coming from. But then, yeah, practically in our query tuning endeavors, performance optimization that we keep doing on day-to-day -day basis, in recent versions of SQL Server, now this is not very relevant. There are a lot of other important metrics to look at. Okay, when I was doing all of this and I was learning and I was like, okay, uh, this is matching up with this object. Shall we try this with another table? Let's just quickly give this a try with another table. There's another table called sales order header. Let's try this now. Let's go and execute this. Jump over to the execution plan and take the cursor over clustered index scan there. So scan, right? Clustered index scan. Each iterator here has this IO cost, CPU cost, etc. And, and, and more importantly, these access methods like clustered index scan or seek because they're directly talking about reading uh, data pages okay what is the io cost here 0 0.509792 this seems to be uh, lesser than what you saw earlier 5.09792. 5.09792. let's record this 509 0.509792 okay let's keep it now how many pages sales order header has let's go and find that out Okay, we have just 685 pages here. So the same formula again, okay, which is cost to access the first data page and then cost to access the subsequent pages into 685 minus one for the remaining pages. What number do we get? Okay, 5097916 rounded up to 509792. All good, it works. Now, I mean, I cannot guarantee if this formula would work with very large tables also. I mean, we're dealing with tables here with a few thousand rows, but yeah, even if it doesn't work, even if there are minor differences, these are hard coded numbers inside the optimizer. It might change in future versions of SQL Server, or if you go back to older versions of SQL Server, the numbers might be different. You never know. All right, so yeah, I've just wanted to do some fun stuff today uh, for this tutorial, for this video, and hope you have uh, enjoyed this. You know, I did the estimated IO cost, and you're wondering there was another tooltip thing there, right? Let's do this. Okay, select sales order header, jump over to the execution plan. So now you know what's the formula and mathematics behind the IO cost. There is another one there, CPU cost what about this what's the formula for this well i have recorded another video which is in our premium membership so if you're watching this on youtube channel you have a members only section you're invited to become a member there are a lot of advanced tutorials out there i did this one for our members or you can go to sequelmaestros.com and take a premium membership 
A lot of all this stuff, internals and performance tuning stuff is covered in our master classes. Also, you can check out the all in one bundle or our master class recordings. Whatever you subscribe to, you get lifetime access. Unlike a lot of other vendors on the internet, SQL Mistruz gives you lifetime access. Watch our content anytime, anywhere, as many times as you want. All right, friends, hope you enjoyed today's video. Do give it a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends and colleagues. I will see you soon in another video. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit SQLMaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, eBooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter at the rate SQL Maestros and myself A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.